The message you are about to listen to is coming from the Potter's House Christian Mission, located at Betfaj, Alata Village, off Ijebu de Ibadan Road, at Debayo, Ibadan. Telephone 081-478-18006 or 080-727-04630. It's enough, Father, we want to thank you one more time for this great privilege of having you as our Father. Thank you for showing us this great mercy in bringing us together tonight. Thank you for speaking to us yesterday as you began this matter as you pour your heart to us, knowing fully well, knowing full well that it is not every time people gather in your presence that you speak to them. Paul said, I cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but I will speak to you as, 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 as babes, because you are yet carnal. So he, he, he prepared a spiritual meal but he gave them something else because they are not able to bear it. Thank you because you are not withdrawing from us that which is profitable unto us. We're grateful. This is just the function of your mercy. And we're asking that that same mercy will bring your word to us tonight. Jehovah, you will grace us to understand. You will help us to follow. Lord, our heart desire is that all grounds that are follow will be broken up tonight. You will even cause water to flow in the desert. You will make a way in the wilderness. You will set the captives free. You will restore the backslider. The sinner you will save. Jehovah, we plead that even the blind you will cause to see. Thank you, Father. For we have prayed with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Good evening this evening. I am going to... Start from Hosea chapter number 10. That's where we started from yesterday. And I'm going to trust God by his spirit to grant us speed and to show us mercy. Hosea chapter number 10. I'll read verse 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. Till he come and reign righteousness upon you. May the Lord bless this word in our hearts in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Yesterday, we took time to look at the introduction to this matter. And I did tell you that There is a way to sow to oneself and possibly a way to sow for oneself. But the instruction here is sow to yourself in righteousness. And I tried to dance around that yesterday. And I did tell you that 
From what I see here, when a man sows to himself in righteousness, he reaps in mercy. Even though I may not be able to look at that even tonight. But help came to us yesterday as we see the word of God saying to us, break up your fallow ground. Not open up your fallow ground. Not sweep up your fallow ground. But break it. Because the surface is hard. It's been abandoned for years. And it will require force and a very, very strong equipment to crack it open. Because over time, it has developed resistance. Broom cannot handle it. I'm not sure that um, even spade can handle it. Not shovel. We need something beyond that to break this hard surface. And it is your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. I will touch some few scriptures tonight just for us to have a picture of what the Lord is requiring from us. The first, the first place that came to my mind is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. And I'm going to read verses 28 and 29. I am not going to do an elaborate study of those two verses. I just want to raise some one or two issues therefrom, and then we can go on to look at other scriptures which the Lord might raise in my heart. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Therefore, no, is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Since the instruction is break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. You cannot be gentle with your fallow ground and yet think you will seek the Lord. And so my first request is, so with what will I break my fallow ground? What is the right equipment? What is the right instrument to break my fallow ground. 
And God said to Jeremiah, The prophet that had a dream, let him tell a dream. It's a message. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. But I need to ask you, can you compare chaff with wheat? It's good to have dreams. It's good to have vision to tell. But it is chaff. But my word is wheat. Yes. No man settled down to eat chaff. Because it carries no nutritive value. Unfortunately, that is what people today are settling for. In the days of famine in Samaria, Permit me. Dove dung. Dove dung. Have you heard that before in the Bible? Inyadaba. Benny. Dove dung is sold. Is it 30 shekels? I can't remember the exact figure. And I sat down one day and said, excuse me, dove dung? Now, I agree that there is a particular grain that is called dove dung. But I'm also not thinking that you can ever understand the Bible when you approach it from the grammatical point of view. I felt in my heart dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Are you saying that which the Holy Spirit rejects men pay money to buy? People go to meetings. They go to conferences and they pay so much only to be fed with those dung. is the trouble of our age because there is famine. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And the one that has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is chaff to the wheat? Unfortunately, those who carry chaff are much more popular. They are famous. And they throw money everywhere. So even those who have the word of God, they are afraid. They are intimidated. I went to preach one church many years ago now. Yes. Maybe about 15, 18 years ago now. The Lord was gracious as he gave us his word. And when I pulled the net, some soul responded. So one day I was driving and I saw one, I recognized one of them. So I picked him. So I engaged him to know how he's fearing now that he has given his life to Jesus. 
And then the young man told me that we don't have time for all of that in our church. Ah, I was shocked. So I decided I was going to go and meet the pastor. So I drove to his office. I said, sir, I met one of those and I thought you are going to watch over that harvest. You know what he told me? He said, you can't be preaching that kind of message every Sunday. The people will run away. I knew I was in trouble. So even those who have the word of God, they are afraid. And so we see fallow ground abounding in the church. We are afraid. I understand. You can't be preaching the word of God that is strong and somebody will draw his check and write and give it to you. I know that's difficult. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I've seen many. <laughs> but I have not seen as much as the old apostle saw. So it's a privilege to suffer for Christ's sake. And then I hear him saying, Is not my word as a fire? Each time I remember this, I ask myself, Why then are churches multiplying and sin is on the increase? Two weeks ago, I was in Makodi, and I drove. You know, I drove through the east because I felt that the eastern part may be better. <laughs> I took up in the bed at 8 a.m. I did not get to the hotel room until 5 minutes to 12 midnight. It was horrible. I got to Tupo. I've passed through that place many times. I couldn't, I couldn't believe what I saw. Is it not the town of David Mark? So when I was ministering, I asked, as I wish I could meet the pastor of David Mark, I want to ask him, what are you preaching? What are you preaching? How can a man sit under the word of God for one hour and nothing moves in him? It's not the word of God. It must be the word of man. No. It's not this. It must be something else. People came to cry at the sepulchre of Lazarus, he didn't respond to all of them. But when my Lord came there and he said, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible said, he that was dead came forth. He may not respond to other voices, but he cannot resist the voice of Jesus. Something tells me that it is not the word of God that we hear everywhere. Chaff, not wheat. It's not my word as a fire, saith the Lord. Can he land somewhere and we not born? 
Will my word fall upon a man? And will not leave a mark? Will my war respect anybody? When he falls upon a king, he burns. When I had time to teach in Bible school, one year, we were to hold the graduation. And I think one of the students was very close to the governor. And then the rector asked me, this man said he's going to bring the governor during the graduation. So I begged the rector. I said, please don't bring him. Except I'm not the one that's going to preach. Don't bring him all. Because I don't understand why the governor will be sitting down and I will not speak. So that they will not scatter the place before we finish graduation. Don't bring him. Tell the brother, don't bring the governor. We are not interested in his coming here. Because he won't like himself. I can't die two times, though. It's not my word as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh <laughs> the rock in pieces. Even though I may not want to deal with this. But all the same, let me tell you that sometime a man may have the word. the hammer that breaks even the rock in pieces. But it may not break the rock. You know why? If you give a hammer to a two-year-old boy to strike a plastic chair, the hammer may likely bounce back. Or give it to a 25-year-old man. Same hammer. He will not strike the chair two times before that chair, before that chair scatters. Nothing is wrong with the hammer. But something is wrong with the handler of the hammer. So sometimes the word of God comes. He doesn't have impact on the fallow ground because the man who is carrying the hammer has not grown life moxu to wield the hammer. So I realize that if the Lord has brought us together this weekend. And the issue is break up your fallow ground. Then we may not be able to approach this matter without the hammer. The heart of man is desperately wicked. This beautiful scripture, Hebrews chapter number four. Are you there? 
What's here at verse 12? For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of where place of the heart. If I sit down with this scripture now, it will take my time. The word of God is quick. In other words, the word of God is alive. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is sharp and sharper than any two-edged sword you can think about. It has the capacity to pierce. No matter how hard the heart could be, the word of God, not the word of man, not the counsel of man, not the thought of man, the word of God is powerful enough to pierce. And when it pierces, it divides asunder soul and spirit. Where they are modeled up, where they are mixed together. I know sometimes you don't even know who you are. Sometimes you are confused. Sometimes I hear a Christian, one mind say I should go, and that mind say I should not go. I say which one? The spirit and the soul seem not to be different, modeled together. But when the word of God comes, it pierces and it divides. Soul could stay where it should stay. Spirit should, could stay where it should stay. The body should stay where it should stay. The word of God, if you sit under an x-ray machine, what will he see? He may see everything, you know, but not the thought of your heart. The CT scan may see so many things, but not what you are thinking. This Bible tells me that the word of God could separate joints and marrow. The word of God discerns the heart. The word of God discerns the intent of the heart and the thoughts of the heart. Now, I said all I've said so far now because I want you to note that there is an instrument, an equipment that we need in this business of breaking the fallow ground. And I don't want to pursue it too far because of other issues which I perceive the Lord we have me deal with tonight. You cannot. Say
sit with friends and you are gisting and you expect that this fallow ground will be broken. You know, a couple of years ago, I came here to preach. I think this sanctuary was still under construction. Somewhere there, we sat. And one of the evenings, as I finished preaching, I sat down, I was, I was praying. And a brother came to sit beside me. I don't know whether the brother is here now. I don't know. I can't recognize him. And then he said, I like the way you preach. But those of us in Lagos, we don't have time for the word of God. You know, I laughed. I said, bro, you know about mobile phone. You don't need a mobile sanctuary. Is it wise? <laughs> Is it wise? Is it wise? How long does it take for an uncultivated land to become a forest? Not, not even when it is rainy. Not in a rainy season like this. Unfortunately, if it is, if it is former rain or latter rain, that would have been all right for me. But you know what Paul said? Somewhere in Acts chapter 28, as Dr. Luke was writing, they just escaped from the sea and they found themselves upon one island that is called Melita. And those barbarians, they did them no little kindness for they kindled fire for them. Paul said, because of the present rain and the cold. I said, ah, that's a strange rain in the Bible. I tried to check where the Lord prophesied and spoke about present rain. I saw former rain. I saw latter rain. I said, where is present rain coming? This present rain does not bring harvest. It brought cold. And the love of the brethren waxing cold because of the present rain. Not even when it's raining will you leave a ground uncultivated. It becomes a forest in a few weeks. I don't know how. Of course, I'm a debtor to all of you in Lagos. You know, I prefer to just sneak in and sneak out. Because of the demands on, on your time. One day I came to preach in Lekki, and they went to go and put me in Ahoyaya. They said that place is called Ahoyaya. I wanted to buy a spare part for my car. At La Dipo. And then they told me, if you don't hit the road at 430, you can ascend me 430. No, I must have my quiet time. Ah, what's the meaning of that? I didn't listen to that instruction. <laughs> I thought I was in my house in Ibadan. So I relaxed. I did my quiet time because you can't take that away from me. When I finished, I hit the road. I nearly cried. 
I couldn't go to Ladipo again. Ah, I said, is this what my brethren are going through in Lagos? How do you survive under this atmosphere? Me? 430. I'm just, I'm just, I am just gathering steam to hear God. And you're on the road going to walk. So I told the Lord, I'll be praying for the brethren in Lagos. You must give us wisdom to handle this. I understand what you are facing. I understand the pressure on your life. I understand the demand on your time. But you cannot joke with your heart. It is because if you leave it uncultivated, I was wondering in my heart when God planted the garden eastward in Eden, He did everything, everything was finished, perfect. Then the Bible said, He took the man He had formed. And brought him into the garden. But before he did that, you know, as I studied the word of God, I realized that God did a handing over note. Everything inside that garden, God listed it and said, Oh, check. And he checked, he says, All right, you sign, the sign is all right. Keep it and dress it. So I was wondering, in the handing over list that I read, there was no serpent there. So I was asking, I've been begging God that when we get to heaven, there should be time for question and answer. Because I have questions. How did the serpent enter and Adam did not know I am thinking that if he has been dressing the grass and keeping it low maybe he will have seen the serpent coming I will have said uh-uh, you are not part of the handing over notes that God gave me we are coming thou as the Lord asked the devil. But I thought he left the land uncultivated. I thought it became fallow. And so the serpent sneaked in. And before he knew what was going on, he was already a victim. You cannot leave your heart uncultivated. It is dangerous not to expose this word unto your heart. Lest serpents will creep in and bite you. I hear Prophet Osea saying, it is time to seek the Lord. So I ask, when is, when it, when is it to seek the Lord? What time is it to seek the Lord? Can I open a scripture? Can I? All right. Luke chapter 2. The gospel of Jesus according to St. Luke chapter 2. I want to 
discuss various instances or symptoms of fallow ground. That will make a man or that should prompt a man to seek the Lord. To seek the word. If you permit me to read from verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year. At the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old. They went up to Jerusalem. After the custom of the feast. Is that in your Bible? Alright. Please take note. I like this family. This is a family that we all should emulate. Like Elikana, the Bible says, this man went up and out every year to Shiloh to worship and to sacrifice. And he will not go alone. Hannah will go. Penina will go. All the children will go. I don't know the name of their children. But the three of them, you know, their names ended with Na, Elikana, Anna, Penina. It's a Na family. Maybe their children are also Na, 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 Na. I don't know. But every year, he will go. And he will go with his wives. He will go with his children. That seems not to be the way we approach God anymore. We we'll leave our children behind. I know I kept begging God. And I know one day we will answer my prayer. You know God answers prayer. Uh -huh. He does. I remember as Moses prayed, show me thy way that I may know thee. God said, you can't see my face. For no man will see my face and live. And I guess that prayer was not answered centuries after because Moses knew no man can know God except God shows him the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. So Moses meant, show me Jesus that I may know you. That prayer appeared not going to be answered. But suddenly, on the Mount of Transfiguration. The Lord went to wake Moses up from where he was. Come, come, come. The prayer you prayed many centuries ago, I am ready to answer it now. God answers prayer. It doesn't matter for how long you have been expecting God to do it. He will do it. I say to the Lord, if men ought always to pray, then God ought always to answer. Latimer down, lie share. And my prayer is that Lord, oh, that my children will know you as their God and not as God of their father. I don't want them to know God as my God, I want them to know God personally. As their own God too. 
So this family were going to Jerusalem. And then they took their son along. The Bible says he was 12. So I saw this family walking with Jesus, keeping the relationship with Jesus for 12 years. But the Bible mentioned that this year they were going up to Jerusalem after the custom. After the custom. They have come to pattern their lives after the custom. I thought it would be after Christ. But no, after the custom. After the tradition. After the practice. You know, when the church got tired of breakthrough, they look for something else. So I began to hear motivational speakers. Have you heard that before? And many of our young, young children, they started running up and down. I don't know. I just get confused. Maybe because I'm not a modern believer. Maybe. Just get confused. If this one is a motivational speaker. And then they are started cramming, you know, quotable quotes. <laughs> so I asked them one day. Was the Bible written by motivation or by inspiration? Is it not when inspiration finish that you people they look for motivation all about? Won't you return to the Lord who inspires? Why do we like to deceive ourselves? Why do we like why do we like alternative? Mary at the marriage that was held in Cana could have given them sobo. It had the same color with wine. But she went to Jesus to the source of life. They have no wine. We are not expecting sobo. What we want is why. When your heart is so engrossed with tradition, sometimes it could be the tradition of the church and not inspiration from the word of God. Then there is a fallow ground situation. It is time to seek the Lord. And you know it's becoming, it's, I, don't, I don't understand. And I don't want to trouble you with my trouble. I see these people. They have been going well. But at a point, it was a routine. They have set their life, their heart on autopilot. They were not looking forward for anything fresh. After a long while that you have been fetching from a well, at a point, it won't bring you fresh water. You will need to go and pack all the mud inside. And treat it for fresh water to break forth. 
when coming to service is just a routine. When prayer is a routine, when you just speak a devotional and read through thoughtlessly, it is time to seek the Lord. I am not against your devotional. Please use it. But I will tell you also, if you don't mind, that your devotional is simply gala. Nobody survived on gala. It is just one thing you need to hold your tummy before you settle down for correct meal. Unfortunately, that is what you use for quiet time. I'm sorry. That's not what I read in the Bible. I'm not against devotional because I also have them. But this is what I use. And I'm not against the fact that you are using your iPad. Please do. Moses started. God gave you two tablets one day. So use your tablets. I'm not against it. I also have. But you won't take this from me. I don't know how, but it appears there is something about this one that I can't. I can't throw away. If God If God will help your heart, if God will help my heart, then we must stop deceiving ourselves. When coming to God's presence is simply a routine, you, you are coming. You know, I will tell people, People think I like to preach all the time. I said, no. Today I've gone to preach two times somewhere. Else. Today. Very early in the morning I will leave. Rushing somewhere to go and preach. And by evening I will still return to Lagos here to preach tomorrow. It's like that too. But for me, preaching is a distraction. Ask me, what do you want? So I want to sit down with the word of God and read and pray. That, if I don't preach one message, will take me to heaven. Because there is something to look forward to. There is something fresh that must break forth. Because this heart has tendency to grow weeds. People, TV, social media, rain of troubles that will make things to grow very fast before you know it. There are many of us, when we started, they can't try to embezzle money in your office because you are the conscience of that place. But now, you have been part of that evil. What happened? It was because your heart became fallow. You are not keeping and dressing it with the word of God. I see you reading devotional on whatsapp he said this is very nourishing and it's in order to last sugar you are just consoling yourself what is nourishing i was talking to somebody and said look you, you need to you need to watch this film even though it's secular it's secular 
but you need to watch it. it, it in fact, when I watch it, 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 it ministered to me. I told her, I appreciate you, but I also need to tell you that the day As began to speak to Balaam, it is because Balaam lost connection with God. It was not in God's design that an ass will speak to his prophet. No. No. If this one will not speak to me, then leave it. They say, Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. Let Lazarus rise from the dead and go. If a man should rise from the place of death, they will listen to him. Abraham said, very good counsel. But they have Moses and the prophets, which means the Bible. Let them listen to the Bible. If they will not hear the Bible, even if a man should rise from here, they will not listen. Are you checking? And you are seeing what I'm seeing here. Let me read a few more verses so that we can pray. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled the days, They came to Jerusalem for the feast and they fulfilled all righteousness. They said we should pay tight. I have paid tight. They said we should give offering. I gave offering. So what else? And I was looking at Jesus. Though a child but it was not childish. It tarried behind. These parents, they were so used to Jesus that there was no fresh desire for him anymore. You are so used to church. You are so used to the district overseer. That when is the one speaking? He said, I know his style. He will start from this place. Then he will go like this and come like this. I know. <laughs> I'm afraid your ground is fallow. It's fallow. You need drastic action. God told Abraham, take your son, thy only son, and go to Moriah. I will show you one of the mountains there. They are offered that child as a burnt offering. And in the morning, Abraham saddled his ass. The Bible said he clave the wood. And then he bind the wood together. And then for three days, he was traveling to the forest. I said, Abraham, are you all right? Eshe, are you all right? A man is going to the river to take his bath. And he carry a bucket of water on top of his head and he's going to the river. Is he all right? You are going to the forest and you are carrying firewood from your house. Are you all right? I didn't know that Abraham was all right. Now, me, no, they're all right. This wood. 
I have tested it over the years. This sacrifice is such that I must burn to ashes. I have tried many woods. I know the one that can burn for a long time. This wood is seizing under my own supervision. If I get to the forest, what will I get there? Wet wood, fire extinguisher. If I strike a match, they won't catch any fire because they are not combustible. Are you not like that? That no matter what message is coming to you, nothing happens because you are wet, drenched in this present rain. What to eat or what to drink and what to wear. To eat to come in cold. Only. These men, they have come to the feast. They fulfill the days, but not God's desire. Ah! Is it because we are in Lagos? But you know, I remember. Oh, Sometime, and it's not foul, when service will finish like this, when the message will finish like this, and you will see people scatter everywhere. They are praying. They are, they are bellowing. And they are there. In those days, when we come for evening service on Sunday, by the time you come back in the evening, you will meet some of them there. On their knees, they are praying themselves out. So I ask, what happened? These woods are no longer combustible. It is time, friends, to seek the Lord. We cannot continue this way. This is not the Christianity I met. This is not the church I met. No. I remember I was in the choir many times when it is time to sing. That is where the service will end. Because before we finish, all of us are on the floor. We are crying. The preacher will not come to say he want to see anything because he himself is there on the floor crying. What happened? This wood are not seasoned. These are wet wood. And they cannot be wood for revival. It is time to seek the Lord. This is first quarter. In the late 70s, in fact, early 80s, when you want to measure yourself, you want to check whether you are a good standing Christian, you measure yourself with a Fosquarian. I am telling you what I know. I have friends in Foursquare. When you want to check your life, when you want to see whether you are standing well as a Christian, you compare your life with his life. Once you fall below that line, just know you are not a Christian. That's history now. It is time to seek the Lord. Can I read to you one more verse or two before I pray? The child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Twelve year old boy. Talosono. Oh man, man will be. 
who got lost? The child or the parents? How can Jesus be missing in your life and you don't know? How will he be missing in your family and there is no cry? How can Jesus be missing in your business transaction and you don't know it? How can Jesus be missing in your courtship and you tell me you don't know? No, it's not Jesus that is missing. You are the one that is missing. They didn't know. A 12-year-old boy could not disappear like that and they didn't feel it. <sighs> Nothing prompts them. Even the instinct of a mother was not functioning. Bro, and you could not sense that there is no Jesus in this business transaction they have brought to you. And you could not sense that this contract that they ask you to sign has no Jesus inside. This is fraud. I said, let me do it. I will repent. I will pray it off. Beautiful nonsense. Excellent rubbish. How will such a great vacuum be created in your life and you don't know. Jacob said, God is, is in this place and I know it not. Is God a needle? It's only a man who wants to reproach an elephant that will say, I saw a glimpse of something now. And you can not feel you. You can feel you. How will God be in a place and you will not know? And how will he be missing in a place and you will not know? Sister, tell me you don't know that God is not in your marriage again. If you don't know, then your ground is fallow. It is time to seek the Lord. Let me take one more because time is running out. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. <laughs> when Christian journey is based on assumption, when you use somebody else's holiness to make up for your own holiness, when you depend upon the righteousness of the pastor to make up for your own unrighteousness, it is time to seek the Lord. How could they think that Jesus is with their friends and they are not worried that he is not with them? I say, excuse me, sir. Anytime I see you in the service, my heart will just be, I know God is here. Eh? That angel greeted Gideon and said, Hail thou man of valor. The Lord is with thee. That was an angel. I thought Gideon was going to celebrate that. Is he a guy angel? Forget that. Of what use is God with me if he's not with us? If God is with us, why are we like this? Why is our portion like this? Why is our life like this? Simeo, I am threshing wheat in a wine press, not on a threshing floor. And you say, God is with me. How? 
if you want to flatter me, I refuse to be flattered. Why will you hide under the grace of your denomination and your life is graceless? Why will you hide under the uprightness of your pastor and your own life is crooked? They suppose Jesus was in the company and they went a whole day journey. Then they sought him among their king's folk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. Oh. I want you to listen to the word of God. This couple did what challenged me. When the day was running out and it was beginning to get dark. He says in Smoney, this boy has not come to ask for biscuit. He has not demanded any attention. He has not asked for anything. This is this is unusual of Jesus. He is not this quiet. He has not come to ask questions. He has not come to ask questions about what we did at the feast. He didn't ask why we did what we did. What happened? Then, I know before, when they would see one of their friends afar, they would wave and smile. And when those ones wave and say, ah, Jesus is with them. Let's continue. Let's continue. But this time around, they went there. He said, where is Jesus? Those ones who say, where is Jesus? We thought he's with you. And we also thought he's with you. So he's nowhere. The man you are thinking is in Jesus. He himself is lost. The Bible said they, they, they turned. They turned back again to Jerusalem. I said, why Jerusalem? Now they have traveled a day's journey. It was time for them to seek rest. It was time for them to check into an hotel and rest their weary feet. But when they couldn't see him, they told themselves, it's time to seek him. Where are we going to see him? Say, where we saw him last? Where did we see him last? Say, in Jerusalem. Brother, you saw him last when you were in Baptisma class. Ever since you left that class, you lost him. You are just patching it up. You are just patching it up. The Lord is not with you in that journey. Won't you tell on the school superintendent that you want to step down and go back to where you saw him last? Since you became a deacon, that's when you lost him. When you were not a deacon, you are a great brother. 
But once oil was poured on you like this, it was like oil of coldness. You just relax. Say, yes, we are now, we have arrived. He He's a chief. He has, he has been given chief tansy title. Not a ministerial office. As we pray tonight, you know I see the Bible say, seeking him. Time will fail me to touch that. But you know, I read somewhere in John chapter 6, maybe verse 34, somewhere around that point. When people ate bread and they came the following day, they couldn't see Jesus, they couldn't see his disciples. The Bible said they went seeking for him. So I suddenly said, Ah. Uh-uh. Is there a difference between seeking him and seeking for him? I know it's difficult in Yoruba. Very, very. You try. I realize that a man who seeks for Jesus is the one who is looking for what Jesus could do for him. Jesus told them, you are not looking for me. You are looking for bread. You ate yesterday and you were filled. Not because you saw the miracle, but because you ate bread. I said, excuse me. I don't understand that. They saw the miracle. That's why they came. I yeah, said, no, no, no. They didn't see the miracle. They ate bread and they were filled. That's what they saw. So how will I see the miracle and not just to eat? He said, check Peter. When Peter saw the drought of fishes, he knelt down said, depart from me, O Lord, for I'm a sinful man. That's a man who saw the miracle and not who saw the fish. Every miracle is to turn man's attention to God. As I ran off, He took them three days before they could locate Jesus. They went everywhere. Where they think a 12-year-old boy will be. They went to where they were exchanging money. Bro, they chum. When they checked, those were exchanging money. Behold, Jesus was not there. I know you are seeking him, but unfortunately, you missed your way into the midst of men who are money exchangers, who talk all the time about money. So if you bring 1,000, God gives you 100,000. Exchange it, God will lead you. Say, so give, it shall be given unto you. I know it's in the Bible. So when you go for a wedding and you, you bring present, do you tell the, the groom and the bride, so as I give you this one, I'm expecting 10 back from you. Tell them whether they will collect it from you. Shall you give to them out of love? Can't you give your offering out of love? Must you give as a trader? I see. They went to where they were selling cows. Those who talk so much about celebration. Behold, it was not with them. Then they turned to where they were selling doves. 
those who merchandise the gift of the Spirit. Key into this prophetic utterance. Just drop a thousand dollars there. And it is yours. Thieves. And robbers. Jesus was not there. By the time they were locating, they found him among men who are discussing the word of God. Rise to your feet as we pray. I have just six minutes left. Sir, it is time to seek the Lord. I know you didn't start this way. I know you didn't start this way. Why will you continue this journey towards heaven without Jesus? Why will you pretend as if he's there when he's not there? Why will you I want you to call upon the Lord tonight. <laughs> you know, I shouldn't teach you what to pray about. Except I have spoken to you and not God. But I am thinking that your heart should yearn. In righteousness for God to come back. Israel said, Absalom, whom we anointed as king over us, is dead in battle. When are we going to bring back the king? Is the time to seek the Lord. As individual, as a church, as a people of God, it is the time for us to seek God. Close your eyes. You know, I still want to invite you to the altar. Tonight, you know it. That you have lost him. You are just managing. Nothing fresh is breaking forth. Nothing new to look forward to. You only depend on motivation. Inspiration is dry. Your life is no longer combustible. You don't easily catch fire. When the word of God comes upon your soul, your soul is not aflame. Those men on the way to him have said, didn't our heart burn within us? When he expounded the word of God. It is money that makes your heart to burn. It is immorality that puts fire in your emotion. The word of God does not ignite anything anymore. Will you come to the Lord tonight and say, Lord, you can't leave me a dead wood. You must ignite me. The woman of Sarifat came to the gate to pick two sticks with which to cook. I said, Lord, no, eggs. Wise men should be at the gate, not sticks. Why should there be sticks? At the gate, we are wise men should sit. Unfortunately, many of our pulpits are dominated by sticks. The gate of churches are manned by sticks and not by wise men. It is time to seek the Lord. I want to ask you freely, you can come to the altar and say, Lord, I am coming back home. I'm coming back home. If that is your decision tonight, please come to the altar. Just quietly come to the altar. 
find a place to kneel and say, Lord, I'm coming back. I cannot go on pretending. There's nothing to pretend about anymore. I must face the reality of this matter. For it is time to seek the Lord. Thank you, sisters, for coming. Just come. Thank you, sister. Thank you for coming. Just find a place and tell the Lord you're coming. Young man, thank you. I came when I was young like this. I was just in form three. God took my decisions. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. It is time to seek the Lord. The Bible is dry before your eyes. You read it, it's like you are reading dead magazine. It is time to seek the Lord. Where are the rest? Where are the rest? Just come. Oh, Lubala, go me. Go me. Baba, go me. Oh, Mo, I saw the me. Nibi. Abele bu Mishe Shuba Iwaku 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 I fear get away, me mom. Fear a jerry way, me Oh yes, For those of us who are Draw me closer. Closer. Draw me nearer. Nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast done. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Nearer. Near a blessed Lord to thy precious bleeding sons. I want you to ask God, draw me nearer. I am drifting. I am drifting. I am drifting. Don't wait until I get lost. Pull me with your strong arm. I must not be missing in action. I must not from church go to hell. If I make money and I don't make heaven, what have I made? Pull me to yourself. My, my heart is willing to drift. That was the song we sang. I have the potency to leave you alone. But Lord, put me in your handcuffs. And tie me to your kingdom. Do not allow me to escape. I see deadly sights. I hear sounds that want to distract me. Father, detain me in your presence as Doeg was detained. Do not allow me to go. 
put in my hand this sharp sword with which I weed my heart so that weed will not grow on my heart and make me to look like a wild animal. And my heart to harbor all kinds of dangerous reptiles. The reptile of lying. The reptile of immorality. The reptile of pride. The reptile of covetousness. The reptile of prayerlessness. The reptile, reptile of faithlessness. Doubt. And all kinds of unbelief. My heart must not be a place for them to hide. This ground must be broken. If you must come, please come quickly. Thank you, brother. It's not late at all to join them. You can still come to join the people at the altar and make your prayers unto him. Tell him. You were there in those days. You will never open your eye and somebody will be going to hell. You are a fiery preacher. You look for soul. You pray for soul. You fast for soul. But now, men are dying and going to hell. And nothing pricks your heart anymore. It's time to seek the Lord. God has blessed you with money. Except they beg you. You can't release it. You are so engrossed with seeing your alerts. And your bank account is increasing every day. You have never learned the principle of you decreasing and him increasing. It is time to seek the Lord. I want to pray. Will you please bring this prayer point here close? In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Almighty Father, our heart is burdened. We see no more our sign. Our fathers have told us we heard the great exploits you did in their days. But we look around, we couldn't find any. We wonder if you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you did it in their days, why are we like this? We realize it is simply an announcement for us to seek you. And Lord, with all of our hearts, as a deer pants after the brooks, you will make our heart to pant after thee, O God. Lord, not what you offer, that one we follow, but after you first. We want to have you as a possession. We want to win you as a medal. Jehovah, we want to have you as though our property. Fathers of old, when they bless the air, they bless them, making God their personal God. This is our heart desire. We want to see revival breaking forth in First Square Gospel Church. We want to see this fire consuming everywhere. Jehovah, we want to see this fire being ignited afresh in our hearts. That we might set the nations ablaze again and stand for what we were known for before in Nigeria and all over the world. This is the cry of our heart. And we request, Lord, that you will respond to us in the name of Jesus. All these ones who are the altar, I pray. Jehovah, you will restore them. Some of them are wounded. You will wash their wounds. You will pour oil and wine. Lord, wine to disinfect it. Oil to soothe it. And you will bind it with your bandage of love. And you will cause healing to take place. In the name of Jesus. There are some of them ailments in their bodies. Make them to lose touch with you. I command every sickness under the sound of my voice here to disappear in the name of Jesus. Some are here, frivolities took over their hearts. They became so careless as they chat on social media. Father, they're on Facebook, but they are no longer in the Lamb's book of life. 
Father, I pray that tonight you will help us to detach ourselves from these attractive distractions in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We hope the message you have just listened to has challenged you to greater height in God. Take a step of obedience in response to the message. It shall be well with you. For further help, inquiries, counsel, and prayers, contact Potter's House Christian Mission at Bedford, Alata Village, off Ijebu de Ibadan Road, at Debayo, Ibadan, Nigeria. P.O. Box 23602, Mapo Post Office, Ibadan. Telephone 081 478 18006 or 080 727 04630. Email media at thepottersmission.org. Website www.thepottersmission.org. God bless you.